Our service is about to begin. I would ask if you have a cellular device to please turn it to the off position. Our service today will begin with military honors.
Our service is about to begin. Officiating our service today will be Rabbi Michael Davis. We're gathered here to walk with Pat, and Phil, and Sue, and to honor the long life of Joseph Abba, Joe Kritzman, your friend, so many relationships. All our prayers today are in the handout you received as we gathered, and we begin with perhaps the most beloved of all the Hebrew Psalms from the Tanakh, from the Bible, the 23rd Psalm. I will chant it in the original traditional Hebrew and offer this as a prayer of comfort and gathering and then invite us all to read from the English together. If you're with us on live stream, any translation you find online will be close enough. Mizmor le David Adonai roi lo exar binot de she yar bitzeni al me menuchot yinhaleni. Nafshi Yeshovev, Nafshi Yeshovev, Yancheni v'magalei tzedek, Ayle man shemo. Kam ki yelech, Begates al mavet, lo irara, ki ata imadi, shi yiftecha, u mishan techa. Shiftecha umishantecha Heima yenachamuni Taruch lefanai shulchan Neget sorerai Di shanta vashemen roshi let us read together the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I just want to reflect for a moment on these familiar words in our ear and our mouths, and uh, one word in the final verse, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Something a little curious about the translation here, which I'd like to pause for a moment on. The Hebrew that I chanted for this word, I will dwell, was... V'shavti. It's a bit of a mismatch there. The word v'shavti doesn't mean I will dwell. Those of you who know Hebrew will know that this close, but a little different. See if you can hear the difference. Not v'shavti, but v'yashavti. Hear the extra ya? That means I will dwell, I will sit. V'shavti has meaning. It means I will return. So taken as the Hebrew is written in the Tanakh, in the Bible, this would be translated 
I will return in the house of the Lord. So you can see what the problem is here, why we needed to change that, right? You return to, once you're there, you dwell in. It doesn't really make sense to say to return in. I'd like to offer perhaps there is some meaning here that the language itself doesn't quite hold, but can give us an insight deeper below the surface. I will return in the house of the Lord forever. Because as we make our way through our mortal journey, we chart a path of wholeness, we strive for physical well-being, emotional health, relationships, family, integrity, everything that we chart a path in where we strive for wholeness. But as we move through the messiness of life, inevitably in all those fields, at some point or other, we'll fall off the path. Perhaps as we get a little older, we learn to spend less time off the path and to bounce back quicker. We have a little less time to stray. But what can we do to make sure that happens, to help that along when those moments happen? So we can lay in store for ourselves these houses of the Lord. Traditionally, that might be a house of worship, and it still is. But perhaps more expansively, that can be family, friends, nature, our pets, music, whatever it is, those places where we restore our spirit and they're there for us when we need them and we set those in store for us so they are there for us when we and when others need them. So my hope and prayer is that this gathering right now, this service, is one such house of the Lord for you to begin to return to wholeness and to draw in all that... uh, the wishes and the prayers and the strength that surround you. Let us take a few moments for private reflections, personal memories, a prayer if you like. Let's take a few moments of silence together. Let us come together affirming each other's prayers with the Osse Shalom. It's the end of the Kaddish, which we'll say later at the cemetery. It's on the back panel. In the Hebrew, it's the last two lines. In the English, the last two and a half lines, beginning with a capital O. I will lead you in song, as I like to say, if you know it. Please sing out loud. And if you don't, just fake it along with everybody else. O se shalom bim romav, hu ya se shalom aleinu, ve al kol Yisrael, ve imru imru, amen. Ya se shalom, ya se shalom, shalom. We all call Israel, Yase Shalom, Yase Shalom, Shalom Malenu. We all call Israel, Yase Shalom, Yase Shalom, Shalom Malenu. We all call Israel, Yase Shalom. Yase shalom, shalom aleinu. We all call Yisrael. Yase shalom, yase shalom, shalom aleinu. We all call Yisrael. 
So I was asked by the family to present some words. Uh, but by way of introduction, before I say that, I say, what am I doing up here? So we know each other kind of socially through family, right? And also, as I began to hear the stories, just share personally, this is what I do. I'm a rabbi, I'm a cantor. But I've also walked this path personally this past year just by way of connection. My own mother passed away, and I was struck by the fact that um, my mom and your dad were, le were less than a month apart in age. So this, this saying goodbye at this advanced age and this journey, it touches all of us right, in all sorts of ways. So these are the words that uh, I'm honored to present on your behalf. Joe Kritzman was born and raised on the West Side in a different age, as we just said, 1931. Big Jewish community there, as you know, perhaps better than I, the old West Side, and three to four times the general population it has today. And he grew up in the Depression. And perhaps that explains, perhaps that explains how frugal he was. He told me how he would save every little thing. Although Phil and Sue say that perhaps they are a little similar in that way too, and they don't have the same excuse. Despite all this, he and Pat traveled the globe from east to west and north to south. He did grow up in a tougher world. And as he told me, he preferred action movies to rom-coms and wrestling and football to, say, figure skating and Olympic curling. Joe's dad was a pharmacist, and Joe went on to study pharmacy at the U of I, and he became a pharmacist too in a hospital. Although he said his dad never pushed him to it, it was his career choice. As we just witnessed, he received military honors, and that was for having served during the Korean War. He was stationed in one of the major American military centers overseas in Germany in a, in a medical capacity. And this was something he was proud of. On occasion, he would wear his vet's cap. He told me how once he was getting a haircut, and it was Veterans Day, and he came into the barber shop wearing the vet's cap. When it came time to pay, the barber said, don't worry about it. Somebody, a stranger, who had seen him coming in wearing the cap, had already taken care of his bill. Story of Pat and Joe. He told me how another girl he had been dating briefly stood him up once, which gave Joe the opening to ask her roommate, Pat, out. And that is how they met and got married. He told me how he enjoyed eating the sweet stuff, even when it wasn't dessert. Pad Thai, not spicy, barbecue sauce, and of course, definitely ice cream, especially if it had extra stuff and chunks inside it. I hear that Jewishly, yours was a mixed marriage. Pat was used to reform, while Joe had grown up conservative. But these marriages can work too. So they started out conservative, and eventually he warmed to reform. He told me how Pat took care of things at home, in all areas. So it wasn't easy when Joe had to start caring for himself, and that became a project with Phil and Sue over time. I was struck, as you were telling me, by, by repeatedly how you said he was a man of few words. And he, he would say something about that. He said he would spend all his day in the hospital pharmacy, picking up the phone, and listening to people with all manner of terrible problems. And that by the time he came home, he was all talked out. I think other people in other careers have the same experience, right? Sometimes you've got enough words at work. He was always a good father. Joe Abba Kritzman was always a good Abba. But like Tavia didn't have the habit of saying to Goldie, I love you, even though he certainly did, he too had been reticent in such expressions of love, and as we said, in talking in general. So I think it's really remarkable and a gift that in later years, I hear he would turn to Phil and say, thank you for everything you're doing, and even... I love you. It's really remarkable, the, the gift of longevity, and particularly so in Joe's case. I mean, if you go down to the old Jewish cemetery in Waldheim, 
right? If you've been there, look rows and rows of people from previous generations who lived to their 50s and 60s. The older ones are the exceptions. So it's really quite recent within living memory that we've come to expect a longer lifespan. But in Joe's case, perhaps it's, we can particularly feel that miracle or the marvel of medicine because already uh, in his 40s, right, he suffered from a heart condition. For 50 years, he lived with that. And perhaps in a different age, he wouldn't have made it as far as he did. And he wouldn't have made it to this chapter of connection, right? And uh, I think perhaps there's a lasting lesson here that we, we get to know people. Typically, we think that children change and evolve, and we get to our 20s, we kind of set in our ways, and perhaps we are. There's also the option, the possibility of change at any, at any point in life. And that gift of longevity can be an opening for a chapter that would never have happened. With, it's not just extra years, it's a whole new life. So I'd encourage you to be open so that those, uh, that miracle, those options of renewing relationships, of having a new chapter, building on the love of the years that came before. May his memory be an enduring blessing. And in the spirit of a man of few words, I want to offer a teaching from the Jewish tradition to all those who are gathered to offer condolences. In the Jewish tradition, we're told to show up exactly as we all are here today, in silence coming with our ears to listen on an open heart. We're told that when we come to the house of mourning, not to initiate conversation. If the mourner wants to cry, give them your shoulder and tissues. If they crack a joke, laugh. If they say nothing, also say nothing. There's nothing wrong with the silence. Silence can be a very connecting way of being with people. So it's our job to show up in silence and to be ready to support people in that way. And sometimes in our society, we have trouble doing that. And something that I've walked through this past year and I've learned from other people, that perhaps outside the immediate circle, people don't always feel comfortable offering condolences. So first, I want to tell you, everybody who's here, everybody who shows up, it is always noticed. Don't think you weren't seen because you didn't say or didn't do. It is that the mourners' hearts are open and everything is taken in, and everything is appreciated. And if you have an opportunity later to say words, just say, say, how are you? That's all it takes. How are you? And I'm ready to listen. If they want to talk about this, they'll talk about this. If they want to talk about something else, they'll talk about something else. We show up with listening. We show up with few words. Perhaps that's a during lesson we can learn. With few words, but implying that we have lots of listening and an open heart. A modern poet wrote, you can shed tears that he is gone, or you can smile because he has lived. You can close your eyes and pray that he will come back, or you can open your eyes and see all that he has left. Your heart can be empty because you cannot see him, or you can be full of the love that you shared. You can turn your back on tomorrow and live yesterday, or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember him and only that he is gone, or you can cherish his memory, let that live on. You can cry and close your mind, be empty and turn your back, or you can do what he would want, smile, open your eyes, love, and go on. You ask to hear a favorite Jewish hymn or song, it's traditionally sung at the end of services, I'll, 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 I'll do the reveal, it's Adon Olam. And uh, you may know that Adon Olam is a poetic articulation of the 13 principles of faith as conceived in the Middle Ages. Uh, but it's enduring uh, popularity, maybe the wealth of melodies it has, but also the last lines that we spoke about. In his hands, I 
I give my soul, my spirit. And if I should die, if my spirit becomes my body, God is for me and I shall not fear. Quoting at the end the lines from Psalm 23 that we opened with. And some traditions have to do that before going to sleep. And perhaps it's enjoying popularity is not because it's a statement of theology and philosophy, but because of the comfort it can offer uh, as a prayer of confidence and perhaps at the end of a life well lived and of trust and of faith. So I'll sing the first and last uh, closing lines. From the way you sang of Seshalom, you might know it too, so feel free to join in. Adon olam asher malach Beterem kol yetzir nivra Le'et nasa becheftzo kol Azai melech shemo nikra to the end Be'yado afkid Ruhi Be'eti Shan De'aira Ve'im Ruhi Gaviyati Adonai Li Ve'lo Ira We're an intimate gathering. As if anybody has words you wish to share, you're welcome to do so. I'll frame it for you. First of all, if nobody speaks, that's also fine. I like to borrow the best from other traditions. Think of the Quakers. Everybody loves the Quakers. They gather in silence. If people have words that need to come out and be heard, it's a welcoming space. If not, the silence, as we just said, silence is golden too. If you are moved to speak, you should know that it's not expected to be um, a polished eulogy and there's no minimum length. It's not a term paper. It can be a little anecdote or vignette or anything that you would like to say, or you can save it for later and do it in a more informal setting. But if you're bursting to say something in honor of Joe, of comfort, then um, we'll leave a few moments of silence now and that can, you can come forward and do that. I'm only gonna ask that you do come up here not to put you on the spot, but because we are on live stream and your voice won't be picked up unless you're here uh, at the microphone, so you should know that. So we conclude with the El Male Rachamim, and we'll say the Kaddish at the cemetery. You can find that on the inside panel of the handout you received as we gathered. Um, I invite you to please rise if you're able. If you're seated next to somebody who can't stand, then stay with them seated so they're not on their own. But if you can stand and you're there, then please do. Hey, <laughs> Hamze menucha nechayno Tachat kanfei hashechino Im kadoshim o tahirim Kezohar harakia mazhirim Et nishmat Yosef abo shalavach leolamo Lochein bal harachamim Yastirehu beseter kanafav leolamim Veitzror bitzror achayim et nishmato Adoinoi hu nachalato Veyanuach veshalom Al Mishkavo Veno Maramein. O God, full of compassion, thou who dwellest on high, grant perfect rest beneath the sheltering wings of thy presence, among the holy and pure who shine as the brightness of the firmament to the soul of Joseph Abba Kritzman has gone into eternity. 
Lord of mercy, bring him under the cover of thy wings and let his soul be bound up in the bond of eternal life. Be thou his possession and may his repose be peace. And we say, Amen. This concludes our service here in the chapel. The interment will take place immediately at the family plots at Shalom Memorial Park in Arlington Heights. Following the interment, the family will be gathering at Hackney's on Lake. That address is located on your service folder. And for those of you who are online, that address is available on our website. Please note that the family has asked that memorial contributions be made to the Cure Alzheimer's Fund, and that information is located both on the website and in the service folder as well. The gathering will take place from 3.30 p.m. until 6.30 p.m. today. For those of you who are going in procession with the family to the cemetery, please make sure you obtain an orange funeral safety sticker. The sticker should be placed in the front passenger side of your windshield. We would also ask that you have your bright headlights and hazard lights on at all times. For an additional measure of safety, our staff will be placing magnetic flags throughout the procession. As we drive in procession, please drive as close as safety permits to the vehicle in front of you at all times. We want to avoid any large gaps or spaces in the procession, particularly as we go through intersections. I'm going to ask everyone to please rise as Mr. Kritzman and Rabbi and the family are escorted from the chapel. <laughs> 